When I was learning how to drive, my dad took me to a very special place in our city. A roundabout. I know, I know, I hear you loud and clear, especially you Bostonians, New Yorkers, or UK-based fans. A roundabout? What's the big deal? Well, this roundabout is a big deal. This traffic control includes four lanes of traffic in a very popular thoroughfare. And we went through it at least 10 times. In that moment of time, or many moments of time as it turned out to be, I learned a very valuable lesson. Timing is everything. And funny thing, I've learned that same lesson over and over and over again. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In today's electronic designs, and especially in the realm of Industry 4.0, timing is absolutely everything. And in order for our designs to be successful in this fast-paced world, we need interoperable, scalable, and flexible communication. In today's Chalk Talk, Josh Levine from Intel and Patrick Loschmidt from TT Tech join me to discuss time-sensitive networking, or TSN. We take a closer look at how TSN addresses each of these crucial networking needs and examine how this collection of standards, specifications, and capabilities can make your next industrial automation design a whole lot easier. All right, let's go. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about time-sensitive networking solutions from Intel. Hi, Josh. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Thanks for having me. And hi, Patrick. Thank you for joining me. Nice to meet you. Okay, so today we're talking about time-sensitive networking, or TSN, for industrial automation. But Josh, before we get started, what all will we be covering today? We're going to start by looking at what the trends in the industry are today, and then we'll learn a little bit about TSN. Next, we're going to explore how TSN can be used for industrial automation and the role of FPGAs, or Field Programmable Gate Arrays, here. And after that, we'll learn about TT Tech's TSN solution and various products based around this and our FPGAs. Finally, we'll wrap up with some key takeaways and I'll share some additional resources. Excellent. Now, Josh, what kind of trends are we talking about in the industry today? How exactly does TSN fit into this? The diagram on the left shows how factories are traditionally architected. They're purpose-built, hierarchical, and inflexible. Each level has a different communication protocol to meet the associated performance requirements of these levels. And often there could be more than one protocol per level. Because of this, data is siloed and inaccessible, and this limits the possibility for analysis and improvement in efficiency, quality, reliability, throughput, etc. A transformation is underway to Industry 4.0 and smart factories, and these are interoperable, scalable, and flexible. So the communication must share the same properties, allowing it to be used across the whole network. TSN offers this. It provides open, interoperable, real-time deterministic communication between all of the elements in the network. Intel CPUs and FPGAs support this move to Industry 4.0 with solutions from the device to the cloud. Okay, so Josh, what exactly is time-sensitive networking and how does it come into play here? TSN is an enhancement to Ethernet to enable reliable and deterministic delivery of data. This is something that Ethernet wasn't previously able to achieve, and it allows it to be used for time-sensitive applications. TSN is not one standard, but a set of standards. It started life as Audio Video Bridging, or AVB, and this was used for real-time audio and video streaming, but it's since been expanded to address other markets. Capabilities are always being added to Ethernet and with new standards being defined to solve new problems. The key features supported by TSN are time synchronization between network elements, traffic shaping, enabling the timely delivery of packets, and mechanisms for reliability and system configuration. TSN also allows all types of traffic to coexist on the same network. Intel is working with a range of partners, consortia, and standards bodies to ensure interoperability and industry best practices in the implementation for each market. Some of the critical ones are the IEEE, IEC, OPC Foundation, Avenue, and IETF, and we're defining standards, profiles and use cases, higher level protocols, and conformance testing standards and programs. Okay, cool. Now, Josh, why should I choose TSN? What does it buy me as an engineer? 
TSN has standards that provide guaranteed latency for data delivery, meaning the deadlines are not missed and providing the determinism that's critical for markets like industrial automation. It has mechanisms for seamless redundancy, achieving high reliability and availability. Because it's standards-based Ethernet, all of the traffic can be carried on the same network. There's no need to build separate networks for control, video, IT, etc. This converging of networks reduces infrastructure costs and is a key benefit of TSN. It includes standards for automatic system configuration, removing the need for manual configuration and expert knowledge. It's open and standards-based, not closed and proprietary. This means that multiple companies, customers, and even competitors are working together to create an open ecosystem where devices made by all of the vendors can use the same network infrastructure and work together. So all of this could help reduce vendor dependence, allowing the best in breed device to be used for a given application, even if it's from a different vendor to other devices in the system. Cool. Okay. So Josh, can we back up a little bit? Can you break down exactly what you mean by TSN? What all does it include? Sure. This slide shows the core elements of TSN. Broadly, it can be divided into four categories. We've mentioned these before. Time synchronization, traffic shaping, availability and reliability mechanisms, and system configuration. The foundation of all of this is time synchronization. All of the nodes in the network need to have a precise sense of time. Everything in the network needs to know what time it is to a high accuracy and agree on this. Traffic shaping can then be implemented based on the time synchronization. An example is traffic scheduling, which allows packets to be launched at a predetermined time and make sure that no other traffic interferes with them. It guarantees that a packet reaches its destination at a predetermined time before the deadline elapses. There are also mechanisms to protect from hardware failure and errant devices and to provide backup for time synchronization. And this gives high availability and reliability, which is critical in many of these markets. Finally, the devices and applications can be set up using automated system configuration tools. Okay, Josh. So what kind of applications are you seeing TSN being used in? TSN has broad applications in many markets, and it includes those listed in this slide. Each of the markets has different requirements, and we'll use a different subset of the TSN standards to achieve these requirements. Excellent. Now, with these type of applications, I would imagine that there are quite a few standards that need to be adhered by. Is that true? Yep. So these are the currently published standards. Anybody can take these and build hardware and software to meet them and test against them. No changes will happen to these standards, but in time, they may be superseded by updated versions. The standards are classified into the same four categories that we described previously, time synchronization, traffic shaping, availability and reliability, and system configuration. The published standards are appended with the year that they're published. For instance, at the top, IEEE 802.1 AS 2020, time synchronization for time-sensitive applications, was published this year. Different markets will use different subsets of these standards. Okay, so Josh, how do these standards connect back to the applications you mentioned earlier? The TSN standards used for different markets are set out in what are called TSN profiles. Here, different associations for each of the markets describe the recipe of TSN standards needed to meet the market's requirements. For example, the TSN profile for industrial automation is defined by IEC IEEE 60802. An industrial automation device needs to support the standards set out in this profile. Okay, so Josh, can we get into some industrial automation a bit? What would an industrial automation application look like? This slide is a cartoon of an industrial system. It shows the different types of automation devices and the different networking functions and network topologies. The devices include controllers, human machine interfaces, robots, servo drives, remote IO modules, and sensors. TSN switches are like the networking switches that you're familiar with, but support TSN features. TSN endpoints allow for a point-to-point -point connection to another endpoint or a switch but also have some primary function or application. TSN switched endpoints combine a TSN switch with an endpoint in a single device. In IT networks, star topologies are typical, but in industrial automation, ring or line topologies are common. These topologies have a reduced cost and performance benefits. Switched endpoints are required to implement a ring or line topology since each device must have at least three ports, one connecting to the device before one connecting to the device after, and an internal port connecting to the primary function or application. 
Also shown in the diagram is a camera, and this is streaming best effort traffic on the same industrial network. And there's a pre-existing brownfield machine that's using a legacy industrial ethernet protocol, which can be carried over TSN. Okay, so TSN addresses the lower layers of the network, but Josh, what about the higher levels? The diagram on the left shows the OSI model. It's a conceptual model of the various layers of standards in a communication system. TSN, as you said, is in the lower layers, mostly layer two, and it's sitting on top of the Ethernet physical layer. Higher level protocols are required together with TSN for a complete solution to replace existing legacy industrial Ethernet. OPCUA is such a higher level protocol. TSN and OPCUA combined together address the needs of industrial automation, providing open, interoperable, real-time deterministic connectivity across the network. Okay, cool. Now, what kind of solutions does Intel offer here? Intel's investing in TSN and it has a number of solutions. We recently announced new Core, Atom, Pentium, and Celeron processors. The industrial variants of these processors include between one and three ports of integrated TSN with up to 2.5 gigabits per second bandwidth. We also have the Intel i210 discrete network controller, which supports TSN. All of these are TSN endpoints. Switch and switch endpoint functionality is provided by Intel FPGAs, and they'll be the focus for the rest of the presentation. So, Josh, you just mentioned FPGAs, and I'm especially interested in how they come into play here. I would imagine that they would bring a lot of benefits to an industrial automation setting. Yeah, FPGAs are commonly used in industrial automation applications. Their capabilities, which are shown on the right-hand side of the slide, include connectivity, deterministic compute, functional safety, and flexibility, and these make them well-suited to the industrial use case. Intel provides a range of FPGA devices optimized for power or performance to address the full spectrum of industrial applications. These are shown on the left. Okay, so Josh, how exactly does TSN come into play in the Intel solution? So Intel FPGAs are the only Intel switched endpoint or switch solution. By using Intel FPGAs, you can reduce your time to market and get ahead of the competition. They can be reprogrammed to support the latest features, and the networking functionality can be customized and combined with other functions on the same FPGA, enabling flexibility. We have a strong license and support model. The TSN is provided with no royalties or license fees. Our TSN solution is provided in partnership with TT Tech. We'll hear more about it later. Excellent. Well, I think it's time to bring in Dr. Patrick Loschmidt from TT Tech. First, Patrick, can you tell me a little bit about what TT Tech is all about? Yeah, thanks for the invitation. TT Tech is dedicated to providing TSN solutions for Intel FPGAs. And our main focus is on providing a complete end-to-end -end solution for use in industrial networks. So we have on this slide here the visualization of how we envision the complete setup. The customer should do the application and we care more or less for the rest of the setup. We not only provide IP, but we provide the whole necessary software setup for embedded solutions in order to build devices and also to integrate them with our network configuration setup. If you look at the slide here, we have a stack on the left side, which gives you an indication on which elements are needed to provide a whole device for TSN. On the bottom, we start with TSN IP. Then you need embedded software covering, for example, drivers, embedded stacks for low-level communication, and of course, Yang models in order to do remote configuration. On top of that, we have the connection to OPCOA over TSN which allows you to configure individual devices on the layer two using OPCUA mechanisms. And above the surface, you then have your customized OPCUA stack or even an open source OPCUA stack that integrates with your application. So IP solutions on the right side provide the whole embedded software for the devices and our network configuration integrates there as an open solution with any TSN device to be configured. Okay, so Patrick, can you tell me about your IP solution specifically? Yeah, sure. We have three different uh, solutions for Intel FPGAs. 
The Edge IP solution in the middle is a two to five port switched endpoint and can be used for industrial applications like we had in the presentation of Josh. We also have a Neon IP, which is a pure TSN endpoint, and the ACM extension, the acceleration module option, which integrates with the Edge IP solution and it enhances the performance of the HRP solution in a line or ring topology. It decreases the forwarding delay for LPC OA over TSN packets to below one microsecond in such a network. Okay, so Patrick, tell me about your network configuration solutions. What do they look like? We have three options which are basically based on the same core library. So we have Slate CNS, our network planning core, integrates with existing network management software and is dedicated to calculate overall network configuration. So if you want to have coordinated network access, like scheduled traffic that was mentioned by Josh before, and you want to guarantee network packet delivery within a certain time, then you need Slate CNS because it calculates the configuration for individual devices in order to guarantee end-to-end -end properties of your data. Slate CNS can provide you consistent configuration over devices so that it can guarantee certain properties of your data like timely delivery. Building on top of Slate CNS, we also have Slate XNS and YNS. Slate XNS is our offline network configuration tool, which allows you to configure demo networks and small networks using a graphical user interface. This user interface can help you input your network topology as well as the demands to streams like certain properties as timely delivery and redundancy. Slate YNIS is our automatic network configuration tool which allows you to online and dynamically reconfigure OPC UA pops up based networks. So these networks allow you to add and remove devices and adjust your stream properties and demands to the network online. So you can change your properties of the network, like your timing requirements, your real-time requirements, and also redundancy requirements. And you can also add and remove devices on demand, and the network will automatically adjust to the needs you have. So Patrick, earlier we talked about the importance of standards in this arena. What kind of standards do you support? We basically support all necessary standards for industrial automation. So we have here a slide showing you the TSN hardware support, the TSN software support, and our configuration support. On the TSN hardware side, all major standards are represented, which gives you the coverage for traffic shaping, redundancy, and also the endpoint functionality. On the TSN software side, we of course support the clock synchronization in the newest version, and we also support the switch protocols that are necessary to operate a standard switch like MSTP, LLDP. Also for the configuration, you re require some remote configuration protocol. And in this case, we use NetConf and we also have limited support for SNMP. On the embedded software side, we have a standard Linux driver exposing interfaces so that you won't see TSN at all. You can just communicate with the switch like with a normal end station. And you also have all the necessary interfaces from Linux exposed so that your existing applications can be reused. On the configuration side, we support the newest standards for the Yang models, which are listed in QCC, QCP, and QCW, as well as 1CB CV, in order to do remote configuration for your devices. Excellent. Now, Patrick, how does an implementation in an FPGA look like here and which interfaces are available? I brought you here two pictures of a typical integration into one of the Intel Cyclone 5 SOC FPGAs. On the top, we have the SOC version, meaning that it has an embedded CPU. And you can see on the right side our switch implementation. We have on the right side, a typical PHY, which can be any standard PHY available on the market, and you can attach it via any MRI standard to our Max. On the left side, you can integrate user logic, so your own design that is required, for example, for IOs, and you can take the time from our switch device. And you can connect the host CPU within the FPGA directly via Avalon to our DMA engine, as well as you get direct register access via an Avalon slave interface. 
If you do not want to use an internal CPU or you already have an existing external CPU, you can also attach our switch via a PCI Express core directly to your external CPU, which could be in this case any x86 host CPU. So by this design, you can have also your own PCI Express card, for example, which allows you to build devices based on that bus system. Excellent. Now, Patrick, can you give me an example of this in real life? What would this type of situation look like? Yeah, I have a similar slide like Josh already presented with a bit different view on the topic. On the top of this slide, you can see an OPCOA PubSub real-time controller, which is used like an SPS in order to control the whole network. This gives you the real-time data as well as configuration data for the application itself. This one is connected to a TSN switch, and then it builds up a ring topology, which is typical for industrial applications, like we have seen in Josh's slide before. Our endpoint solution is used in this ring, and is this intermixed with third-party field devices in order to show that TSN is interoperable with any device, and it can be even mixed. On such connections, you have multiple switch control protocols running, like MSTP, and also the clock synchronization protocol in order to align between the devices. Our OPCOA TSN field devices are then able to forward communication in a converged scenario and can connect to also standard devices there. On the left side, you can see our Slater solution, which is used in order to configure the whole network and it can be placed actually anywhere in the network. So as you can see from this slide, our solution portfolio completely covers the industrial scenarios. All right. So can we map this back to the FPGAs we mentioned earlier? What are my options if I'm looking to implement TSN in my next design? If you're looking to implement your own custom TSN system, Intel's introduced three special Cyclone 5 SoC versions, which come bundled with the TT Tech TSN switch and switched endpoint IP. The key ingredients needed for this option are set out on the left. They consist of the FPGA, design software, TSN IP, and the TT Tech TSN Evaluation Board, which can be used for evaluation and development. And finally, their reference design, which serves as a foundation for customization. There are no license fees or royalties. The IP is provided by Intel, and support is provided by Intel through Intel Premier Support and communities.intel.com. The three special Cyclone 5 SoC versions are shown on the right-hand side. They're all available through Melza. Excellent. Now, Josh, what if I don't really want to design my own? Do you guys have an off-the-shelf option for me? For customers who don't want to develop their own solutions, we're working with our ecosystem partners to provide a variety of off-the-shelf systems. All of these are products which include pre-configured FPGA designs that are based on the TT Tech TSN IP. And again, there's no additional licensing or royalty payments. On this slide, we show the four port gigabit TSN switch, which has a combined PCI Express network interface card function that's provided by Contron. This allows you to convert a PC into a TSN switched endpoint. Excellent. Now, do you guys have any kind of kit to help me along my way here? Yep. We also have an industrial PC from Contron, which comes complete with the uh, four port gigabit TSN switch that I talked about on the last slide. And this includes software for evaluating the performance of the solution. And it's a great TSN platform for industrial automation. So both of these solutions are available from Mauser and uh, it should be easy to find them with your search engine of choice. Excellent. Now this has been a lot to take in today. Josh, can you recap your main points for me? Certainly. So in conclusion, TSN is a collection of standard specifications and capabilities that enhance ethernet with four key elements, time synchronization, traffic shaping, availability and reliability, and system configuration. TSN enables Ethernet to meet the communication needs of various segments or markets, including industrial automation. Intel provides a range of solutions for TSN, and our Intel FPGA-based TSN switch and switch endpoint solutions are provided through close partnership with TT Tech and with strong licensing and support models. So Josh, where should my audience go for more information? If you'd like more information on our TSN solution, it's available from the Mauser Intel Cyclone 5 FPGA page. And this includes product lists for the products mentioned before and some brochures on TSN. 
You can find that by searching for Mauser Intel Cyclone 5. We also have a white paper that's published with Intel and TT Tech. It's entitled Time Sensitive Networking from Theory to Implementation in Industrial Automation. And you can find this by searching Intel TT Tech TSN white paper. Lastly, the Intel IoT Real Time website is where you can find more information on the capabilities of our new generation of processors. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Josh. Thank you, Amelia. And thank you for joining me, Patrick. Thank you as well. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about time-sensitive networking solutions from Intel. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.